Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Red Bull Salzburg versus Chelsea match preview is upon us. Red Bull Salzburg, they're unbeaten in the Champions League group stage at the moment. Um, we need to find our attacking mojo back ASAP. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Champions League nights are upon us. Look, we've not been good in recent times and we need to snap out of it. And this is the match we need to start snapping, snapping out of things um, very, very imminently. We are on top of the Champions League uh, table at the moment for Group E. And a win here will go a long way. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're going to come first, but it does go a long way. It does mean that we qualify for the second round. Uh, we do need to ensure, unless, you know, AC Milan drops some points against Zagreb, which I don't think so. They're probably going to get the win. Uh, but a win against Salzburg will ensure we move into the second place and then a, a win in the, in the or perhaps even a draw, I believe, will ensure that we end up coming first um, in, the, in the final day against Zagreb. So look, this is important, ladies and gentlemen. This is very important. And Salzburg, as I said, they're unbeaten in the group stage at the moment. They're the only unbeaten team uh, in our, in, within the group. I think AC Milan's lost twice. Zagreb has lost twice. We've lost once as well against Zagreb. And, and Salzburg are the only unbeaten team. They're a quality team, man. this Austrian-based team. They're a quality team. We've tried to steal a lot of their, obviously, Christoph Frund. Uh, we've been uh, monitoring some of their players in terms of uh, Benjamin Sesko and so on and so forth. Um, the post, they, they didn't, to be honest, that first match that we played, that was the first match for Graham Potter when he first took over Chelsea. I don't think they posed too much threat. We looked very good. That was the back three that I really enjoyed when Graham Potter came in and he used Raheem Sterling as one of the wing backs, you know, predominantly as a winger, the wide winger. And uh, since then, it's not been the same. Since then, it's really been sort of like a Tuchel-esque uh, type of lineup. So this match against Salzburg, ladies and gentlemen, I think I think we, there's enough for us to go out there and get the victory. Obviously, there's going to be a bit of rotation. There is some dilemma in terms of who we can use in defense, uh, there's some absenteeism, who we can use in midfield as well. There's players that are probably not 100% in terms of their fitness as well in, the, in regards to uh, Matteo Kovacic. So look, there's a lot riding on this particular match. Obviously, Salzburg will do their level best to win. Let's get straight into, first let's react to some of the key components from Graham Potter's press conference. And then we'll do our uh, predicted lineup that I think is uh, is going to be um, perhaps used, uh, in my opinion. I mean, look, uh, whether it happens or not, I don't know. But this is what I guess I would like to see. But first up, let's have a look at some of these comments from uh, the press conference. First up, Potter on Koulibaly's fitness. It's too, not too serious. This game is too soon for him. We are hoping to get him on grass maybe on Wednesday or Thursday, but he's not available for tomorrow. So already, you know, Kalidou Koulibaly is not available and we have some issues in defense. Now we're going to have to use Thiago Silva again. And yeah, this guy at the age of 38, I mean, how much more can we squeeze out the juice out of him? I don't know, but he's going to have to play. Potter and Kukura, this is interesting. We're going to touch on Kukura again. There's another tweet uh, as to why potentially his form might be a bit off in recent times. So Potter and Kukura, he's, he has had a bit of illness, but he is now a lot better. The reason for Manchester United sub was purely tactical. Potter and uh, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, I think he has put himself in a position where he's one of the players Gareth will be looking at as an outsider in the squad. Fantastic news. Um, Salzburg are really, really strong side, especially he, you can tell he has done his research with the Austrian champions, holding a great home record. Yeah, good, good. Potter needs to do homework on, on uh, Salzburg, man. Salzburg ain't, ain't no mug, man. Like, uh, they've, they've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe against AC Milan in this group stage as well. Loftus-Cheek, I'd be amazing, and it would mean a lot as a player going to the 2018 World Cup. You see your trajectory going up and being at the next World Cup, if anything goes well. A lot has happened in that time, but I'm just glad to be fit and healthy. 
Uh, Loftus Cheek adds, it would mean the world to make the World Cup squad, but he insists he won't be selfish and think about it at the time when Chelsea need him. Yeah, we definitely need him. He's potentially going to have to start against um, against Salzburg, but we'll see. We'll see. I might, I might, I might give a bit of a twist in the lineup. Ruben Loftus Cheek spoke so honestly and openly and maturely. Maturely, there you can't do that without feeling comfortable and confident in your surroundings. Having watched his journey for so long, it's heartening to see him like this, which is great. Ruben Loftus Cheek is probably one of the finer stories of this season coming out. Um, fantastic to see. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Khalid Koulibaly is not available for this match and uh, some information about Kukurea, but here's a little bit more. As learned that Kukurea lost four to five kilos in hospital with tonsillitis and those close to Kukurea know he hasn't fully recovered physically. This is one of the reasons why Grand Potter has no remorse subbing him early. So look, in recent times against Brentford, I believe, or was it Aston Villa? I think it was Aston Villa. He got subbed off early. And against, obviously, Man United, he was against um, Aston Villa, it was at half time. And against uh, Man United, it was 35th minute. So, look, there seems to be some reasons as to why there is that form dip. But at the same time, um, he needs to improve his form. He hundred percent needs to improve his form. But there's some context there in regards to why maybe that might have been tonsillitis, losing losing weight, four to five kilos is not a sort of small talk. And uh, hopefully he comes back strong. I wanted to touch on this. A lot of people are having a go at Raheem Sterling, and I need to I need to put some context around it. Look, I'm not denying the fact that he's been a bit weird in the last four to five matches, a bit out of form. Not going to lie, but he's I feel like I feel like he's he's someone who we need to keep on persisting with. He's a good attacker. He hasn't just gone poor uh, the, with the snap of a finger. Graham Potter on Raheem Sterling needing to do more. I think it's more a team thing. We have to try to do better as a team, improve our attacking play as a team, and then individuals can do better. So look, this bit of information from Graham Potter is so so crucial, ladies and gentlemen. It's not about certain individuals. In some cases, yes, like Kai Havertz, yes. But in this case, Raheem Sterling, if the entire team does well as a, as a unit, I'm sure Raheem Sterling's performance will rise as well. In, in the last few matches, you can see our attackers, as a unit, they've not been good. So forget about the individuals. Do you know what I mean? Um, Grandpa further goes on to say, I always want to look at how the team functions and there is a lot of improvement possible in that area, and that will help Raheem. So, look, we need to keep trusting on Raheem Sterling, and hopefully he comes through for us ASAP. Here's a little bit of uh, information from um, Graham Potter in regards to this matter. So let's listen in on this from the beginning. He gives a bit of context, CFC Daily, as a Graham Potter providing context, uh, needed context. Um, th this is in regards to when Graham Potter was asked, how does you know what's happening with Chelsea's attack? So this is what he had to say uh, in regards to Chelsea's attack, you know, not being not being potent in recent times. Well, it's a, a simple question to ask, but quite a complex one to answer. Lots of things, I would say. I mean, we've had a couple of issues in terms of losing Reese, um, Kulabalis, Wesley, in terms of stability. In terms of stability. Oops. Um, Away matches uh, on the back of away matches in the Champions League, uh, tough, tough places to go. So, combination of finding the right balance, a bit of a process in terms of not too much training time in between the games. I think we've had the last three weeks, seven matches. So, when players are coming out for different reasons, just to find that stability and that uh, structure. Is, is probably a bit more complex. So that's probably been a little bit of the challenge as well. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I've said it in recent times. One of the key factors, and it's not a coincidence because we saw this last season as well, Reese James's injury. And I know a lot of people will say, Miz, we can't be a one-man one pony. Do you know what I mean? We need to have a lot more to us. I get it. But his attacking prowess, his ability to defend the way he does, it's incredible on that right side. When you don't have him and and, and the drop-off from his level to where Aspie pays, and no disrespect to Aspie, the drop-off is night and day. Do you know what I mean? And, and that whole side, and I've said it previously, 
there, just understand the domino effect. When that side doesn't operate properly, it trickles on to the rest of our game. And every other place, we need to start compensating. On top of that, when Bridge James doesn't play, some of our midfield issues, which are well magnified every game anyway, but without Reese James, it's it's even more highlighted. And then also, Grand Potter goes on to say, someone like Koulibaly, who's been playing really, really well in recent times, not been available in that LCB position, which, which also matters because he's actually been one of our stronger defenders. And not to be able to use Kukurea perhaps in the wingback position or in the, uh, you know, whether it be a fullback position, and him coming coming into as an LCB Kukurea, I don't know it's all, if, if it's always um, the right thing. Do you know what I mean? He could potentially do a job. There's no doubt about that. Kukurea can do that. But Koulibaly is the one that we need. And then, obviously, games so often not being able to train enough. Midfield, there's injury issues. So we need to address this bit by bit every single window. This coming up window in January, have to get a fullback, have to get a midfielder, and then come the summer, we have to add attackers, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at the table right now. This is how the Group E is shaping out. As I said, Salzburg, the only unbeaten team, as you can see there, no losses. Four matches, one win, three draws, no losses. We're on seven points. Salzburg's on six points. Milan's on four points. Zagreb on four points. We get a victory here, and we should try and get a victory that qualifies us for the next stage, um, second round of the Champions League. Very, very important to do that. And I think it will be a fantastic achievement for Graham Potter as well, being in the Champions League for the first time in his career and, um, you know, taking Chelsea from an unbelievable position where we were initially to, to qualify for the second round. So win will get us to 10 points and, you know, and then in the final day, we need to settle a score with Zagreb. I completely expect us to beat Zagreb and, and, you know, ensure that we come first in the group. So look, it's not the end of the world if we don't win, but we need to start switching. We need to see a lot more in our attack. We need to perform better. The last three matches in attack, we've not been good. And not just in attack, in fact, even in defense, even though we've kept a few clean sheets, obviously Man United, uh, we conceded, but we conceded after a long time. But we've been under siege, man. There's been times in the last three matches patches of the match where we've been under siege defensively as well. So we need to sort that out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's now look at the lineup that I'm going to go with. There's going to be some twists and there's going to be some turns. I'm not going to lie. We're going to have to do some rotation. We've got Brighton, I believe, in the in the Premier League um, uh, during the weekend. So we have, to, we have to think about what we do. Look, with the goalkeeper, we don't need to change much. We continue with Kepa. I don't think... We need to chop and change and bring Mendy back in. Kepa's doing well. Let's continue with him and let's give him the opportunity to keep shining. I'm going with the 4-2-3-1, as you can see here. Um, look, whether we do this or not, I don't know. But this is somewhat of the formation that we kind of changed against Man United midway through. We brought in Kovacic and sooner or later it became a 4-2-3-1. I'm pretty sure potentially it did become a 4-2-3-1, didn't it? Um with Aubameyang up front, I think Sterling was there as well. Mason Mount was there. Um, Chilwell was the left back. Um, and some of the players with I can't really remember now. But I, th I think potentially against Man United, it did become a 4-2-3-1 once Kovacic came on. So look, in the left back position, I'm going to go with Kukurea because Chilwell had a full match against Man United. Whether he can back up again with his you know, recovery, still rehabilitation, uh, him still finding his way back. I don't think it's wise to keep on playing him. Kukura uh, as, as left back in the middle. I don't think we have any other options. It's got to be Silva and it's got to be Chalaba. We, we are down. We are down in numbers. We'll see Fofana is out uh, until until post-World Cup. And Khalid Koulibaly is not available for this match. He'll be available for the weekend. So for us... Stock standard, Silva and Chalaba. There is no other option. In the right back position, it's got to be Aspilicueta. Once again, no options available. Do I want to see as we play week in, week out? Now it's not even week in, week out. It's almost every match, every three days. So we're just going to have to pray that Aspi does, does the job over here. In the middle, 
we heard what Grant Potter had to say about Kovacic um, not being able to start. He's also carrying some sort of an injury issue. I won't be surprised post-World Cup if he has a surgery and he might be potentially out for, for a little while. But right now, you know, he's hanging on, he's holding on. He didn't start against Man United, but pretty much played the the bulk of the game anyway, came on 35th minute. Does he start here? I think I'll need him to start. I really do. Uh, we need to go off to a good start on this match. I'm going to go with Kovacic and Jorginho and give Ruben off the cheek a bit of a break. Um, he's been, once again, playing quite a bit. Um, this match, once again, for Ruben off the cheek with the injury history that he has, we don't want to burn him up because potentially he'll start against Brighton. Um, so... Jorginho and Kovacic can mind the situation now and you know, sometime during halftime we could potentially see Kovacic go off and Ruben Loftus-Cheek come on or Chukamika could potentially come on as well. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Perhaps Chukamika comes on uh, you know, further up. This is where I'm going to have a bit of fun and I think a rotation is needed. Someone like Christian Pulisic, I don't think we can deny this guy anymore, man. This is quite mad, to be honest, that he's not been able to start. I would 100% start Christian Pulisic. He, in fact, I would have started Christian Pulisic in the previous matches as well. So I keep saying since the Wolves game, how this guy hasn't started, it's mad. And then off the back of that really good performance um, against Brentford, I believe, he came off the bench. He had an electric sort of uh, you know, final few minutes. He definitely starts for me against um, Salzburg and he could potentially be one of the attacking threats for us. So Pulisic starts in the middle. Gallagher, hopefully he is all fine from the illness, whatever has happened to him against Brentford. Hopefully he's back on track. We need him. He was playing well up until that Brentford issue, the illness. So I'm going to bring him in, give Mason Mount a break. Mason Mount's been playing a lot of football, so let him continue there. Up front, Aubameyang as well. Have a bit of break, man. Amanda Broya, this is your opportunity to start a match in the Champions League and yeah, really, really impress in, in the world stage. You know, Champions League night, uh, lots of you know people are going to be watching. AC Milan, obviously, after him. There's no way we're going to be selling Armando Breyer, but this is the time to impress. But one thing about Armando Breyer, don't play just for yourself, my man. Play for the team. Look for those passes, the cutbacks, whatever it is, whenever there is an opportunity. Obviously, if there is a goal-scoring chance, take it. But if there is a better opportunity to pass and set someone up, do that as well. It's very important to rack up the assists just as much as getting the goals. Uh, for me, honestly, sometimes the assists are bigger than the goals, to be honest. In here, this is the interesting part. Do you go with perhaps uh, Kai Havertz? If it's Kai Havertz, I'll probably play Kai just behind Amanda Brohan and, and Gallagher on that on that side. I'm, I'm probably looking to give Ziyech a chance here. There was some talk that post... Um, Man United game that we would potentially do a lot of rotation for this match and give players that haven't played too much this season so far an opportunity to, to start here. Ziyech is ready. Ziyech is ready. He's not ill anymore. I, I would look to give Ziyech an opportunity here. Raheem Sterling can take a bit of break. Havertz has not been good, so he can take a bit of break. Mount has been playing a lot of games lately. So only leaves Ziyech at the moment. So Look, we could potentially have Ziyech in the middle and Gallagher on that right side, but I like this setup. You know, let's start the match like this. And then obviously we've got a whole heap of players to uh, consider to come off the bench and take the minutes. Chukomika, are we potentially going to see Dennis Zakaria? I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, this is my lineup. Kepa, Kukura, Silva, Chalaba, Aspi, Kovacic, Eugenio, Pulisic, Gallagher, Ziyech, Armando Breuer. I'm confident. I'm confident that team will be hungry and will do the job Hopefully, look, we can keep a clean sheet against Salzburg. It's not going to be easy away from home. They're going to be very difficult. But maybe maybe a 2-0 victory. Uh, we need to start clicking into gears again, man. The last three games have not been get great. Let's find some momentum again. Move into that Brighton game in the weekend with some good confidence behind our backside uh, and potentially score some goals against Salzburg as well. And, and really, there's a lot of incentive to do well here. Get the victory and qualify for the second round. You know, confirm that. So for the final game, even though I think it's ne it's a necessity to do well against Zagreb because we lost, but, uh, uh, you know, we will be somewhat 
stress less i suppose knowing that we've gone through so ladies and gentlemen let me know how, what you think about that lineup let me know how you feel about this particular match comment below hope you guys have enjoyed this smash the like button if you have if you're here for the first time subscribe hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my con uh all my content i shall see you guys for the watch along tomorrow till next time see ya.